Joining me right now on the phones, Congressman Jody Arrington. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Chad. Great to be with you, my friend. Uh, gl- glad to have you here on the program. Uh, obviously, a lot of things going on in Washington, D.C. Uh, b- before we get into some uh, some legislation and uh, a meeting you had uh, with, with the president, I, w- I want to get your just your overall thoughts right now on uh, the situation with North and South Korea. The uh, president of South Korea saying that President Trump already deserves the uh, Nobel Peace Prize for uh, the, the, <laughs> the two countries kind of getting together and talking on, on all this. Uh, from, from where you sit and, and those that you're speaking with there in Washington, uh, how, how do you look at all of this playing out? Well, it'd be the first time since uh, the last president received the Nobel Peace Prize that somebody had to earn it. Um, this president has um, restored and is and is restoring our leadership in the world. And uh, one way to do that is just do what you say you're going to do. He's doing that domestically, and people are all watching. Are we going to restore law and order and rule of law? And are we going to get the great American economy growing again? All those things are check plus plus. And uh, and then he's going to make good on what, ironically, President Obama said with respect to the Syrian red line. Twice he's uh, made good on that. And we've uh, whipped ISIS um, uh, it back to almost uh, annihilation, although there will always be an issue, radical Islam. But this, this peace through strength works. And I think that uh, this, this president is reluctant to engage in conflicts around the world. So am I. But if you engage, you engage with the full force of our military might when, is, when it's necessary. I think uh, the, the North Korean uh, leadership, uh, Kim Jong-un, understood that this president means business and uh, that those uh, assets that he marshaled uh, in the Korean Peninsula were not there just for show. And um, I'm I'm glad that we're avoiding the conflict. I don't want to go into. I think there'd be tremendous collateral damage. But uh, this president deserves the credit, and I support him 100 percent in uh, in what he's doing to restore our leadership and and provide the real security, not only for Americans but for our allies like Japan and South Korea. Do, do you trust though that this is leading somewhere, or are you? Uh, still looking at this like, like many others going, eh, let, let's see what North Korea actually does before we pop the champagne bottles. Yeah, I, I wouldn't say mission accomplished uh, with uh, the North Korean uh, leadership or Iran with Tehran's leadership or, or uh, Moscow. I mean, I think you always have to have a bit of a jaundiced eye uh, towards these guys. Um, and, uh, you know, if they will denuclearize, if we we can put into place real mechanisms, unlike we did in uh, the Iran nuclear deal, where we can prove that they uh, do not have the facilities and wherewithal, then that's great. I mean, they may have imploded on their own. Uh, who knows exactly why? I do think the economic sanctions were hurting them badly, just like they were, Chad, uh, hurting uh, Tehran and the country of Iran before we lifted those and gave them tens of billions of dollars back. Uh, it was a terrible deal, in my opinion. So, yeah, I think you have to be suspect, but you have to move forward, and you have to have these conversations. And uh, as long as there's real accountability and oversight, uh, I think that's the best outcome. Visiting with Congressman Jody Arrington here on the Chad HD Show. I uh, want to talk about a piece of legislation uh, that uh, will be honoring a Plainview native. Uh, Bill Mulder, a uh, friend of mine from high school, this guy was an absolute stud. I mean, he was played linebacker uh, for Plainview Bulldogs. He was uh, spent a career fighting for our country, Chad, and uh, as a Navy SEAL. And uh, he uh, was transitioning from a career as a Navy SEAL back to civilian life. And he struggled. He struggled with depression. I think he struggled with uh, the effects of PTSD and, and uh, ultimately took his own life. And, mm-hmm. and, and uh, a lot of folks who are trained to be warriors, and we spend billions of dollars to do that, by the way, and that's why we have the best fighting machine in the world in terms of our armed forces. 
My point is, though, we spend a fraction of the time, effort, and resources to transition them to civilian life. It's not easy to do that. And a lot of these folks, their identity is wrapped up in being a warrior, as you would imagine. So I, I, this is a transformational um, policy reform on the transition assistance program. It's now called the Bill Mulder Transition Assistance Reform of 2018. This is my signature legislation coming out of uh, uh, the VA. And I just, uh, there's a lot of specifics to it, but I just, the main point is engage these guys early and give them all the support that they need as they transition so they can have the most productive and the best quality of life as a civilian, maximizing their experiences and skills that they that they acquired in the military. So uh, if you do it, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of intervention when they're homeless, suicidal, jobless, incarcerated. Uh, so we want to get ahead of this. I think that's the best approach in public policy. I, I think the... Obviously, the, the intentions here are good. How do we carry this out? Because when you when you talk about the VA, when you talk about ca- taking care of veterans, not everyone has a, a rosy picture of how that turns out. Well, you make a great point. And obviously, uh, there's no more sus- uh, a suspicious person or skeptical person with respect to the bureaucracy, the VA. In this case, it's mostly DOD, and it's trying to get these guys a year before they transition into civilian life uh, up from like 90 days. We've got to start the process earlier. For example, one of the things we change is we're, in, we're, we're doing a more comprehensive assessment, and we're not just looking at their work uh, or, uh, training needs or education. We're looking at their mental health condition. We're looking at uh, a report of folks that might be struggling with uh, mental health disorders because that that may be the root cause, and let's not spend a bunch of time and effort and um, on the back end if we don't know the root cause, which is more health-related than training-related. And then lastly, uh, there are more pieces to this, but to be quick, we engage them with folks in the community um, and community organizations, and we put more of the uh, responsibility on those organizations to help our veterans. That's really the sweet spot because they can do a much better job than the VA uh, seven days a week, twice on Sunday. Right. Visiting with Congressman Jody Arrington. Speaking of the VA, uh, I I know you were... um, uh, excited when uh, Ronnie Jackson uh, w- was announced uh, that that he would be the nominee for uh, VA secretary, and obviously he withdrew uh, late last week. What are your overall thoughts on th- how that entire situation played out? Well, I don't have the details that uh, you know the ranking member of the Senate committee uh, Tester has been talking about. I don't think anybody does. In fact, the FBI said there's no record of these allegations. It's sad. This is this is the swamp at its worst, uh, where people are being accused of things. There's no record of it. My gosh, this guy was the doctor for two presidents who both praised him uh, for his work and his integrity. So uh, I'm just going to assume that when he says it's not true, it's not. I will tell you, I'm disappointed that he that he that he uh, uh, pulled his name. I mean, you can't let the swamp win. I mean, you just got to say. Uh, we're not going to let these guys intimidate us and threaten us. Uh, and uh, that's what they do up here. But I also appreciate that the guy has had a great career, and he wants to uh, you know, continue that and not besperge his integrity and his name. Um, and, you know, that's the, that's the game these guys play, and it makes me sick. I was looking forward to working with a West Texan who could go and be tough with the VA, which is what they need. So from, from your perspective, was this all politics? Because, I mean, a guy who was accused of everything he was doing, he got to serve, what, three presidents. That normally doesn't happen when you're accused of everything he was accused of. Look, I worked in presidential personnel. I advised President uh, Bush on appointments like this. And there's an extensive FBI vetting background system check. Um, and uh, you got two presidents who were in the care of this guy. Uh, there's just no way that all that has been alleged has happened. 
Uh, again, I wish he wouldn't have withdrawn. Yeah, it's political, Chad. This is this happens every day. I mean, this, this asylum seeking thing has been orchestrated. I mean, the resistance stuff, the Second Amendment walkouts. I mean, we've got a real clash of civilizations within our own country. We've got a clash of ideology. Uh, we have a clash of. We've got a battle for the heart and mind and soul of this country. And uh, th- this is. Uh, I think there's going to be a clear. Uh, decision uh, uh, when it comes to midterm elections about where the swamp is, uh, you know, at its worst in terms of resisting uh, this country, making progress and upholding the laws of the land and and doing right by its citizens and securing uh, not just our border, but but providing security throughout the world, like we talked about with uh, the Korean situation. So, um, I, I think this only hurts uh, the, the Democrats. People see right through this. Um, the, the American people, I, I know that the vast majority of Americans have good judgment, and uh, I, I think they'll see through this, and I think it'll play out in the favor of uh, of the good guys. Congressman, we need to take the break. When we come back, you had a, a, a big meeting with President Trump. We'll want to get into that and uh, also find out what else is on your plate Uh, moving forward in Congress. When we come back, we'll visit, continue our visit with Congressman Jody Arrington, Chad HD Show, KFYO. Congressman Jody Arrington back on with us right now. Congressman, again, thank you for joining us today. Uh, You bet. Last, I believe it was last uh, Thursday, uh, you were in a meeting with President Trump uh, talking about term limits. Uh, this was uh, something that I had planned for since we introduced the legislation. As you know, uh, I introduced it with a Democrat from California, Ro Khanna, who's a dear friend. Uh, couldn't be more different. Um, he served in the in the uh, Obama administration. Uh, he comes from a very liberal district. Obviously, we come from a conservative district, but we both believe that we've got to change the culture. Culture of Washington. And one of the ways we need to do that and can do that is through term limits and not letting, uh, you know, it's kind of the saying that they had when uh, they limited the terms of presidents in the 22nd Amendment to the Constitution. The American people don't want kings and they don't want career politicians. It's not healthy and the outcomes aren't as good as they could be otherwise. The president was great, very engaged. Uh, we used my bill as a as the sort of uh, uh, template for discussing. He was very impressed that we had both Republicans and Democrats. We have another Democrat who's joined my bill, uh, Vicente Gonzalez from Texas, and uh, he noted to uh, to uh, the, the chairman of the Freedom Caucus, who was also there with us. He said, "This is the most passionate group I've met with," and we all said, "It's because you know you." could change policy here in Washington, and that policy changes, you know, every different administration in various seasons. We want to change the culture of Washington, because that's a that's a generational opportunity for our kids. And it really spoke to him. Uh, he asked a really good question about how do we get this through, and uh, that's where my man Mike Gallagher from Wisconsin uh, said that, listen, uh, let's start with, uh, if, we, if, the, if the only way to get this through politically is to just grandfather the rest of Congress in and term limit just our class and every class thereafter. I mean, if that's the only way we can get it in, then let's do it. And we all sat there and said, President, we're, we're willing to do it. Term limit us and everybody after. We'll change this thing. But uh, he's the one that kind of pushed on that because he knew that uh, if we tried to term limit everybody here, that the guys who've been here for a while would uh, resist that. We might not even get it to a vote. Right. But he's in agreement. He supports it. And I expect that when we get him the legislation uh, revised, I suspect he'll he'll come forward with a statement. So, in in, in your mind, is this something that starts to move? Uh, you know, this year, and when I say start to move, I mean towards getting votes uh, this year, or is this after the 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 midterm election? Well, if he wanted to press hard on it, and listen, we can't do this without him. Uh, that's just a fact. Uh, this is a drain the swamp 
era in our country's life. He is the chief drainer of the swamp. And uh, if he wants to make this a midterm issue, which I think he should, I think it puts tremendous pressure on uh, folks to uh, to sign their name to something that would get a vote. Um, but it's a high threshold because you're amending the Constitution. But um, I, we're, we pushed for him to do it sooner rather than later and use the uh, election, midterm election dynamics. Uh, but, you know, that he's going to have to decide with his counsel uh, over there at the White House. But he was enthusiastic and encouraged that this freshman class, as we said, we're not just a new class, we're a new generation of policymakers, and we want, we want to change the game uh, you know, for, for our kids. What, what have you heard on this from uh, folks who have been there for 20 years? Uh, for, I mean, have really made a, a lifetime, uh, <laughs> a, a lifetime you know, service out, out of this. What have you been hearing from them? Anything? Well, I mean, there are some folks that still believe that uh, that uh, every you know two years you you have a term limit. It's called elections. I used to think that, Chad, but with all the money that's thrown uh, at these elections and the way they're gerrymandered, I, I just don't I don't buy that. I mean, there's a reason we term limited presidents and governors and 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 mayors. I mean, all the way down to the local level. And uh, I just think it would be a healthy dynamic. It doesn't solve every problem. It's not a panic see it for for everything but it is it is it polls over 80 percent this is another point we were trying to make to the president that over 80 percent of americans republican and democrats support this and so i think the time's right i think we have the right president and i think this is the right issue to push uh to 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 be the sort of specific concrete initiative for draining the swamp and he's he's bought in 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 your mind what would that mean for what, what would the term limits look like for the house and senate um, you, you, well, you need to have them long enough that you don't cede your authority to the staff. I mean, you do need time to get in, learn your business, and make the difference. I mean, shoot, farm bills don't happen but every five years. Right. So we basically say, Chad, that you get two six-year terms in the Senate, so two six-year terms in the Senate, and then a corresponding six two-year terms in the House. So you got 12 and 12 so that they're corresponding the president like that. Uh, um, and um, he initially pushed back and said, how about 10? And we said, look, we'd be for 10, but it, it'd be nice to have it uh, congruent with the Senate. He totally agreed. So, um, I mean, we didn't want to put so many moving parts in this that we made it more complicated. We wanted it to be simple and straightforward and easy to understand and, and, the, and easy, the, you know, with the most palatability to get the votes. Yeah. Uh, what's on your schedule the rest of the week? Well, I'm going to be in the district uh, most of the time, and so we're traveling uh, in the eastern part of the district, and uh, we'll do some agriculture engagement. We'll also have small businesses. I'll be in Brownfield to to speak uh, with their chamber. We'll have some public forums, some some uh, uh, town hall type meetings for folks in these uh, small towns. You know, those guys mean a lot to me as a as a kid who grew up in Plainview, and uh, but the but the small business is what we're celebrating right now. So that's going to be a theme is the sort of the job creators and the, the engine that makes this place go. And I'm, I'm getting a lot of positive feedback on what we've done in terms of tax and regulatory reform. I mean, this, this you know, small towns and small businesses are disproportionately affected by big government. And uh, I think uh, these folks feel very hopeful. And I think they're, uh, they're getting to keep more of their money that they're reinvesting to expand and create more opportunities for these little communities. So, Very good. Very good. Congressman Jody Arrington, as always, appreciate your time, sir. We'll visit with you down the road. Thanks, Chad. Always good to be with you. God bless. That's Congressman Jody Arrington here on the Chad H.T. Show.